Hello everyone, guess what day it is? It's Friday. Let me know if you can hear me. It looks good to me today. I think we're good, but you guys let me know. You're the judge. You're the judge. <clears throat> okay, you guys here? <laughs> Just checking. The chat's not moving at the moment. There we go. All right. Thank you, Travis. Our journal guy, Travis. Hello, Nancy. Hi, Dorothy. Must be a little bit of a lag going on today. Because I'm like, I'm talking and nobody's chatting. <laughs> I hope you're doing a great... Uh, I hope you're doing good. I hope... <laughs> how about that for a start? I hope you're having a great day. Yeah. Hi, Patty. Kimberly. Nancy. Katie. Hello, Katie. Travis, Auntie Michael, hello Dar, Cheshire Cat Dar, hey Jamie, you come to judge, you come to judge, that's right Jamie, <laughs> hi Ellen, hi Linda, hello Carla, Carla's trying to sew a junk journal together and having trouble, that is no fun, when you have trouble with a project, that is no fun. He come to judge. Now you got an earworm in me, Jamie. Thanks for that. You gave me an earworm. <laughs> and you and you slammed me back to the 70s. Or whatever it was. 60s, 70s. Um Yeah, so thanks for being here, everybody. It's been an incredibly, and I do mean incredibly busy week this week for me. Your thread is to think. <laughs> <laughs> Carla's thread is too thick to sew together her junk journal, so everyone needs to give her a smaller think. <laughs> uh, thank you, Jamie. She tossed a big old blanky love over everybody. Um, yeah, so what was I going to say? <laughs> train of thought just went. As somebody said, I lost the I lost the train of thought. Don't worry, I'll get back on the track in a minute. Oh, I know what it was. Those of you guys that are watching the recording, I will just be chatting in case you're new to me. I'm Barb Owen of HowToGetCreative.com. And if you're new to me uh, and you're watching the recording of this live show, for the first few minutes I just chat with the viewers because it is my chance to actually get to visit with them. So if you're not interested in listening to chit a bunch of chit chat, just fast forward a few minutes. How's Miss Dorothy today? Hi, Vicki. Thick. She meant thick thread, not think. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> I knew. I was just teasing you. I thought actually you meant thin. Uh, let's see. I know. I know, Jamie. She says, can't you just see him bopping across the stage saying that with his silly wig on? Yes. <laughs> Jamie, you saw it on reruns. Mm -hmm. Sure you did. <clears throat> um... Hi Monique, good to see you. My crap shirt, my crap shirt's not very far away, but yeah, I have on a decent, I should never have on any decent clothes in this studio. Never. <laughs> Everything I have has paint splatters or something on it. I have one shirt that was actually one of my better shirts. I don't have a fancy wardrobe. I know this is going to come as a surprise to most of you that I don't have a fancy wardrobe, but I spend... 95% of my time in the, inside the walls of the studio. And then when I leave here, it's like too much trouble to change my clothes. So I just wear the same old thing every day. Which doesn't bother me. It probably bothers everybody else, but doesn't bother me. Um, so, yeah. So most of what I have on, you know, if it's decent, it has paint stuff on it. So. <laughs> I'm laughing at the chat here if you guys can't hey, i broadcast at 2 p.m on eastern 2 p.m eastern on fridays so if you're not in the live audience you should try to come visit with us because the chat is funny okay let's go back hello amelie hi kimberly hi kim uh let's see who else we got here hi sheila shells sorry misread your name Dorothy is fine. She's busy making mandalas. Good for you. 
That's for Mandala Madness, in case you didn't know, which is a course that's currently running live. Um, Dar. Um, Nancy says her class name is Mixed Media. She promises even though she's cheating. There is no cheating. <laughs> there is, Nancy, there is no cheating. Okay, there is no cheating in Mandalas. <laughs> They're just made the way you want to make them. Um, she's really, really cheating. No, you're not. No, you're not. <laughs> hey, Janet. Hi, Ina. Good to see you. Amelie says that she... Wait, I just lost it. I just saw Jan was here. Jan, I'm glad you're here. I'm going to show your happy mail. Amelie says she's very, very sick. A severe case of mandala fever. <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing, Amelie, but I'm sure there's a pill somewhere. I'm sure someone will give you a pill for that. <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Um, <laughs> Jamie has decent clothes, but she's seldom seen in them. Yeah, I have a couple of decent things, and and they generally get um, generally get get stuff on them. I gotta kill my email. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to have that up. Okay. Um, there's Vicky. Hello, Vicky. <laughs> Ellen wants to know if there's a cure for mandala fever. I'm not sure. Hi, Lori. Boy, you guys, I haven't, I'm trying to scroll back and you guys are chatting a bunch. Yeah. Hi, Jennifer. Cracked minis, Jennifer. And Jan, you know, Jan sent me, Lady True North is Jan. She sent me some happy mail, which arrived yesterday. And honestly, I've, I have been up until two o'clock every night this week. I have not answered email, and I haven't got even got the blog post written for last week. So you guys are, um, I appreciate your patience. Let's see. Hi, Mayor. Let's see. Who else? Carla says she just wears jammies all day long. There you go. <laughs> and she has no clothes without paint stains. I so understand that. I was going to tell you the t-shirt I have. One of my few good t-shirts that I had, I made the mistake of wearing it in here one day. And I was um, stamping something. You know, it was just a quick project. I was just, you know, going to do something while it was on my mind. And I dropped an archival black, of course it had to be black, ink pad right on my shirt, on my white shirt. And it didn't just get me once. It got, it like, it like jumped down the front of my shirt. So I had like three archival black ink pad things. It Now, I've washed it enough times. I tried every stain remover thing I could think of. And everything I could research, nothing took it out. Nothing. Some of it lightened it. But I've washed it enough times, it's almost faded out now. <laughs> so that's a good thing. Uh, let's see. I keep losing my chat. Let's see. Hang on a minute. Hi, Bonnie. Let's see. Uh, okay. All right, so I'm just checking the chat here. Hey, Judy Patootie. Good to see you. <laughs> Nancy Dale desperately wants a spirograph now. Yeah, we're going to play with a spirograph today. That's what we're going to do. Hi, Pavla. Good to see you. Um, okay, just trying to get down to the bottom of the chat. Uh oh, Katie just sold her, was just sold at a yard sale, sold a spirograph, or somebody did. A cute little kid bought it. Good. We're going to talk, um, we're going to talk about several different spirographs today. <laughs> yeah, Ellen says, Ellen says, I always make the mistake of stumbling into my crafting space and starting to craft in the morning and I forget to change. So all my jammies are stained. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I can relate. <laughs> oh, Carla got a, she got a, a spirograph from somebody that sent her one from Wish, from the Wish app. I don't, I don't use the Wish app. Janet, who's in the chat. Uh, is the one that introduced everybody to the Wish app. I have refrained from doing that, but if you want to get on the Wish app, you can find some good things, including a small, like a mini spirograph for a dollar or something ridiculous. Um, 
And Jay said, Auntie Michael says Dollar Tree has a small spiral graph like toy. Okay, cool. Hey, Stephen. Stephen Bland is in the house. Um, <laughs> Janet says, solution for stained jammies. Don't wear any. <laughs> I'm not touching that. Mm -mm. No, I'm not. Here's your word for the day. Here's your word for the day. <laughs> I hope that, I hope we can do some of this today. I hope we can do some inspire today. All right. So we're going to let the illegal fluids live here carefully for the moment. I don't think race is here. Claus man is in the house, but I don't think race is. And if he is, do not rat me out. Okay. <sighs> Carla doesn't buy from the Wish app either, but she, but she does ogle. That's the first step to getting caught, you know, Carla. Yes, it is. <laughs> that is the first step in getting caught in the net called Wish. The Wish app. I don't know exactly. I have never even gone there, so I can't speak to it at all. I just know that it's dangerous. It's just dangerous. Okay, so, yeah, let me just start start the thing so um, my name is barb owen in case you've never been here before this is called drama free friday because drama free friday is linda McAllister. i thought you were my friend um drama free friday gets its name because we just like toss all the drama we kick the drama to the curb for a couple of hours i know there's plenty of serious stuff going on in the world i'm not an idiot although <laughs> although there could be an argument made for that by a few um, you know, I just prefer on Drama Free Fridays for a couple of hours to stick my head in the sand and pretend the world is unicorns and rainbows and fun. So that's what we do. Yeah. Um, so that's what we do. We just, we just do that. So that's where it got its name, Drama Free Friday. So we try to keep not only, um, the space here drama free, we try to keep the chat drama free as well. And, uh, yeah, so I appreciate you guys helping me out with that. All right, so this, let's see, couple of, only two announcements. Hmm, amazing. Amazing. Um, <laughs> the chat goes wild. Uh-oh. I seem to be frozen. Why am I frozen? <clears throat> let's try a different camera. Okay. Hold on a minute, people. Okay, you can see me here. We're going to have to switch cameras. Sorry. <sighs> You're going to get an up-the-nose shot. Yeah, my other cameras decided not to not to work. So, sorry, but you're going to have to get the up-the-nose shot for the moment. <clears throat> so, anyway, it decided to be a little ornery. So, this is a weird shot. I agree. But, anyway. Okay, so two quick announcements. One, let me sit back here so I can talk to you. Oh, I need to talk to this camera. One is Mandela Madness is going like gangbusters. I'm going to tell you, if you're not a Mandela Madness, there's still time for you to get into Mandela Madness. Mandela Madness. And you really need to do it, if at all possible. Uh, the show and shares on Saturday... We have three of them left, and they are amazing. The, the, um, the inspiration from the people in the show and share classes, I, I am, I just, every week I'm just completely gobsmacked, honestly. So, anyway, um, yeah, so there's still time to join. So we are into... Uh, classes, let's see, we did classes 9 and 10 this week, 7, 8, 9 and 10 this week. So there's still classes left, but you can jump in at any point and just get right in there with us. So tomorrow is the show and share. Anybody that's in the class, the show and share, you'll get the link in your email and that will show up uh, in your email tomorrow. Okay? <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> so, so sorry about the goofy camera angle. I'll try not to give you the nostril cam view, but yeah, such is life. 
Okay, so let's see if this camera is going to cooperate with us. Shall we? Okay. Okay, so let's uh, see what we can do. Hello, Jane. <sighs> no cure for being gobsmacked. That is for sure. All right. So you will not get to see my face while I'm talking to you about this because that's the camera, the face camera is the one that decided to be Henri today. Haven't had an Henri camera for a while, so there you go. <sighs> so here we go. This was a lovely little um, unexpected happy mail that I received. And so I'm going to show you about this. And Jan's in the in the audience. I'm going to read you a little bit of her letter. If you have never received um, the mail from somebody who can read like or write like this, it's just incredible. And I apologize again that I'm not looking at you face to face, but my camera's messed up. Okay, so she was sending me a belated butterfly birthday, and let's see. Uh oh, race is here. Oh no. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Race is in the chat. Race is the technical department. He says he likes the new camera shot. <laughs> I bet you do. <laughs> Race? Race? I got to remember to look at the right camera. There's not enough room on the bus. Okay. I got the message that there's not enough room on the bus. So there you go. Okay. Here, I'll just read, to the, read this to you. I'm trying... I'm trying really hard not to have you look up my nose, but, you know, it could happen, people. It could happen. Um, she says, forgive the absence of Quail Hill. That's where she lives, on Quail Hill in Canada. Um, but she had computer crashes, and, and she had some physical issues. Oh, this is really hard to look at a different camera. I'm telling you. <laughs> I, just, I keep looking at the wrong one. So if you see my eyes dart up here, that's where I normally look. So I apologize. Anyway, quit apologizing and just do the thing. Yeah, everyone get off the bus. That's right. There's not enough room and my bus is full and it caused a problem. Um, let's see. So um, she's in the throes or throes. It's either the T-H-R-O-E-S or the T-H-R-O-W-S. I'm not sure which and neither is she. Of cleaning and de-junking and getting space because they were having someone come to visit them from Germany. And uh, she's coming for a nice long visit. So that was pretty funny. Let's see. And they're busy getting an itinerary to get together because they're going on um, another trip which is cool and so here's the part about what she sent she sent me a butterfly birthday book in it you will find a small tag booklet to be made into something some iris dyed and paint dyed coffee filters which I thought were pretty and they are wait till you see them and in each pocket there's some dried petals from various quail hill flowers along with the requisite munstead lavender buds you can always tell it's happy mail from Jan because the lavender, it just it just overwhelms when you open, not overwhelms in a bad way, but overwhelms when you open the package. It's like, yes, there it is. It's from Jan. And then she also sent a wee stamp when she was putting this together. And she said, for some strange reason that she put in quotes, you immediately sprang to mind when I saw it. Go figure. Now I have to tell you that Clausman wasn't very happy with this stamp because he hates it when I say this word. Or this yeah, he hates it. So anyway, that was the gist of her letter. But her letters are wonderful. So Lady Jan, thank you so much. Um so let me check the chat here for a minute. So again, pardon the goofy camera angle. <laughs> okay they're just chatting here yeah it was really sweet so I'm going to show you what she sent I'm going to show you what she said this is not a good camera angle <laughs> just saying anyway let's change the camera okay here we go 
So, he, first of all, I'm going to show you. These are iris dyed, and I think she said paint and iris. Look at this. Look how beautiful this is. Coffee filters that she dyed. Hello, Linda. Hi, Scribble Artie. <laughs> I need a, la a waterproof laptop cover. That's right. So here's this book that she made with butterflies on it. She knows the story of the butterflies and how much they mean to me. And so she put together this little book. Beautiful napkin, which could be slipped out to do something with, but I might not. Look at how beautiful this is. Ah, yummy. And so in here she has wishing you wildflower mornings and butterfly afternoons. Home is where um, thou arts, which is true. And inside these little, it's, it's like paper bags that she put together, or envelopes, I'm not sure which. But in here, there are more of the, the coffee filters. And you have to be really careful with her mail because she sabotages you a little bit <laughs> in a good way. But look. Look at that. Aren't those cool? What a beautiful, beautiful shades of lavender and purple. So if you guys want to know anything, hi, Care. If you want to know anything, Jan, Lady True North is in the chat, so ask her any questions you have about this process and so forth and if I see it I'll try to um, I will try to repeat them so in this one we'll take this out in this little pocket more coffee filters this one is yum delicious. this looks like paint to me beautiful and then a little tag booklet with a butterfly. And inside it says, happiness is like a butterfly. If you sit down quietly, it may light upon you. Isn't that the truth? And more butterflies. That's really fun. Put two little tags together. So that was in this pocket. Or it might not be exactly the way she had it because um, I have looked at some of it. I. I couldn't help myself. I had to look. Okay, turning the page. So this says the Wes Gray and Silver War World War II Memorial Rose, aka John's Rose, named for Gary, that's her husband, Gary's father. The bush was planted in his memory the week he passed away, July 7th, 2008. But look at that. Isn't that amazing? And everything has butterflies on it. And then here is a little package, all carefully folded up. I did peek in here earlier. And in here is, I mean, look at this. I don't know how she sends this stuff from Canada, and it always arrives okay. Because it is so incredibly, what she sends is so incredibly delicate. So these are petals from... Um, John's Rose, I'm sure. Aren't they beautiful? Ah, so amazing. She, and like I said, she has sent me stuff from Canada before the most delicate things. I can send something across, I can send a, I can mail a check across town and it arrives all, you know, chopped to bits. But she can send me delicate things from Canada and they arrive. <laughs> Hi, Yvonne. <laughs> it's like crazy. And this one is the Rosamundi Gallica Versa, Vera, Versicolor. So called because it can revert back to the original dark pink rose on the same branch. She is the sister to the world's oldest rose, the Apothecary Gallica. Oh, look at this. So you can get this beautiful varied color rose or it can go back to the same color on the same branch. Amazing. All right, let's see what this is. This is as far as I got in the book, so I didn't get any further. Let me make sure, yeah. Okay, so in this packet, look at these petals. <laughs> Travis says, that's because it's the Columbia, Missouri post office with the students. <laughs> that's right, look at these petals. This is from that rose, look at the Okay, I have to show you this because this is so beautiful. Let me get my 
camera situation straightened out here a minute. Hang on one second. Look at how beautiful this is. Look at this. Oh, I dropped it. See, it arrives perfectly, and then I drop it right in front of Jan. Look at this. Aren't those beautiful? Amazing. Yeah. Okay, back to the, and this little packet that she fixed is filled with those petals. I don't know what I'm going to do with those other than I may just admire them because they're beautiful. My father was um, my father was a teacher at the local university here, and he taught floriculture, which is flowers. So there were always flowers in our home, and I've done my share of gardening, but it's been a while. Jan is an active gardener. She does incredible gardening. I don't dare not put, take the time to put these back in these little bags. It's such a cool book. Uh, Quail, Quail Hill Munstead Lavender in the Field Before the First Harvest. And I may not be, be pronouncing the word Munstead correctly. It's spelled M-U-N-S-T-E-A-D. Do the roses still have a scent? I don't know. The lavender is strong enough that I'm not sure. Let's take a whiff. Hold on. I'm going to take a whiff. I'm checking. A little bit. They honestly do. The roses still have a little bit of, of um, the rose smell. They do. Thanks for asking that, Ellen. So, that was the roses. Yeah, I don't dare not put these back. So this is the lavender right here. All right. Put them in the little plastic archival envelope in the journal. That's a good idea, Monique. Okay, look in here. Look, she has sent me lavender before. I have to show you. This, look, she sent this to me before. So this is some of the lavender. And I don't know, oh no, this was, this was a little jar that somebody else sent me, but it just made like this perfect little vase. So yeah, this sits in a special place. So I have new fresh lavenders, lavender buds, amazing. Linda McAllister, she's being bad in the chat. We're going to have to wrangle her. Yep, we're going to have to wrangle her. She's being bad in the chat. <laughs> okay, I'm not going to, well, yeah, maybe I will. I got it all the way back in. Okay, let's see what's the next page. Canada 150 or the Maple Leaf Flag Tulips. So I know this was Canada's 150th anniversary, I think is right. Somebody can correct me. Um, successfully, yay, no squirrels for this year's, yeah, Canada's 150th birthday. Aren't those pretty? Look at that. All right, is there something in this one? There is. Okay, let's see what it is. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> sure you do, Linda. Sure you do. And those of you that are might be new to the chat, when you see the Nightbot show, show up, Nightbot is our friend. So don't worry about Nightbot. He just gives you messages so I don't have to stop and type stuff in. Look at these petals from that tulip. Look at those. Are those incredible or what? And there's several of them. Mm. See, Jan comes up with things I would never think to do. Look, there's a whole bunch of them in there. She comes up with things to send that I would never even think of. But it's very fond memories about the days of my dad. My dad would come home late, sometimes from the university, you know, because he'd have something going on. So he, he would come home a few minutes late or a half hour or whatever. When he would come in, because of what he taught, 
he always had flowers, so he would always come in with a bouquet of flowers for my mom to apologize for being late. <laughs> Let's just say. Okay, hang on. <laughs> get my I gotta get positioned for the camera. Okay. Let me just say that in all the years I've been married to Claus Man, when he came home late, he never brought flowers with him. I'm just saying. Just saying. <laughs> all right. Um, and so here's the back of the book. That is the most beautiful paper and the napkin. But isn't that pretty? And the way she put it together is it's put together, held together with a ribbon. So this ribbon holds everything together. Is that cool? It's lovely, Jan. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Jan. And then this is the wee stamp that she sent, okay? <laughs> that Claus Man wasn't fond of. All right, let me get the camera situation repositioned here. Okay, so here is the stamp. <laughs> I know, exactly. Linda says that camera gives her the feeling she's little and sitting on the floor. Me too. Okay, here's the stamp. Okay, you ready? That's why Clausman didn't like doesn't like it because he doesn't like when I say that. <laughs> so Clausman, this is just for you. <laughs> it's just for you. <laughs> ah. Yes, Clausman made me an ugly woman. Yes, he did. That's just for Clausman right there. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I love that. So thank you, Jan. Let me see if I can do it face to face here. So thank you, Jan. Thank you, Jan. <laughs> Again, if you came in late, my face to face camera decided there wasn't enough room on the bus and I didn't want to have to stop and fix everything. So we're using this camera that I have to look at and do gymnastics to see you guys. So there you go. All right. So thank you, thank you. So that's why that's the reason for the funny camera angle. All right, let's move on, shall we? So put that back with that. Move my little lavenders out of the way. Let's talk spirographs, shall we? Let's see. Let's talk about spirographs. Um, uh, thank you, Jan. She said she enjoyed doing it and it was uh, fun to do it. I'm so glad. I'm terrible about returning happy mail. Jan knows this about me, so yeah. All right, so we're going to talk about spirographs today. The reason we're talking about spirographs is because of one of the people taking, one of the class members taking Mandela Madness um, because she cracked out a spirograph the other day and I went, oh, I need that. Now, I already had this one, okay? This is the original Spirograph Junior. All right, now I hesitate to say anything negative about any products, um, but I'm going to tell you that this is not this is not one I would recommend. Um, it is, the gears are huge and this one has a hard time working so for me anyway so I'm not gonna get this one out okay just saying we're not gonna get this one out um, we're gonna move on to this one and there are links to these this one and the next one I'm gonna show you there are links to them in the um, description box below the video so this one is called the original Spirograph shapes set And um, and this is this creates amazing new designs for ages eight and up. I think you have to be a pretty smart eight-year-old to do this, or else I just need to act like an eight-year-old. I'm not sure which. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure lots of you had these when you were kids. I didn't, and so I'm just getting in on the playing with the spirograph thing. 
And this one, the other one I'm going to show you. This one is the one that, it was Jennifer, I believe, in our class, our uh, Mandela Madness. It was during one of the show and share sessions that she showed this one, the Spirograph Cyclex. I guess that's how you say it, Cyclex. Uh, spiral drawing tool. So we'll talk about this one as well. Okay. So we're going to talk about both of these. We're going to start with this one because this is the one that's more kind of traditional as it were. So this is the shape set. Now this is not the original original. The, the original ones I think were just, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, I think the original ones were just plastic rings and then a bunch of circular um, small discs that had holes drilled in them and that all worked together to make all the different shapes. This is, yeah, this is the upgrade, man. <laughs> this is the upgrade. This is a fun box, I have to say. It's a hexagonal box. So inside the box you get instructions and I will tell you that it, this is kind of, uh, this is kind of a good thing to have. It gives you lots of, I mean it's a bunch of pages. Look, it's a bunch of pages of instructions and gives you all kinds of different ideas. Okay, so comes with that. This is when we were just playing with it to start with. It comes with two pads of paper. I do not know um, if there's anything special about the paper because one's blue and one's red. Don't really know because I didn't, I don't care for the paper as much as other things because it's really thin. But um, yeah, it does come with paper. And then this is how it looks inside the box. So it comes with a plastic cover. And then in here you have, instead of the plastic rings, it comes with a ring. It comes with a square, square-ish. <laughs> Patty says, you're going to make me want to go out and buy one of those, aren't you? Uh, well, it's really fun. I don't know, Patty. You can you can judge for yourself today. And then the um, red triangle one. According to the instructions, and I will read this to you verbatim. Remember, this is for an eight-year-old and up. Okay. Um, and I'll tell you more about the rest of it here in a minute. But the, well, now I probably can't find it. This one is for beginners. This one is for the, like the intermediate level. And this one is, oh, here we go. Challenge level, right here. Challenge level. Beginner, medium, expert. <laughs> I haven't graduated expert yet, just saying. Uh, the original had circles and long hem gauge shaped ones that, and the teeth went around the outside. Ah, teeth went around the outside. Oh, that's interesting. Cool. So there is putty in here. All right. The putty, I'll show you what to do with that. The putty goes on the back side of these. Um, the Whatever the big shape is, you put the putty on that. It's kind of like blue tack and it just holds it to your page. I think the original ones came with pins, like map pins that pinned it down to your um, surface. And then you have all of these little shapes. Okay, so these are the little wheels that do their thing on the inside and I guess on the outside. I haven't tried anything with the outside yet. And then it comes with some Spirograph pins, which I have to say I'm not super cracked about the pins, but you know, that's how those, how that goes. So let's break it open and just play a little bit, shall we? And then we'll see what we can do with these Spirograph things. So I've played around with paper, I've played with cardstock, and what I'm what I really ended up liking was this particular watercolor paper, which is from I get this at Michael's. It's cheap as in inexpensive, but not cheap as in quality, in my opinion. Uh, it's Artist Loft watercolor pad. This one is 140 pounds, 24 sheets, 11 by 15. Um, I did not put the link for this in the in the live stream, but I will put it in if I can remember for the recording. 
and this is artist level two. This is a cold pressed paper, but it's amazingly smooth and I really, I really do like it. So we're going to play with it. Okay. All right, so let's, um, let's prepare our little ring. So I'm going to get some of the putty out. And it tells you in the instructions to put four pea-sized pieces of this putty behind the ring. Okay. Now, there's a fine line between too much and not enough. If you don't have enough, it moves around on you like crazy. If you have too much, then it doesn't let the tool be level and... Um, and so the wheels, the inside wheels get, they kind of can go either under the, the big ring or whatever. There's a learning curve to this. Let me tell you, there is a learning curve. So if patience is not your strong suit, this might not be your tool. All right, so I put it on the side. There are engraved numbers. Let me see if I can show this to you. There are engraved numbers here and there are also other numbers there are people who are spirograph artists that really know the ins and outs of this that is not me okay that is not me what we're doing what we're doing here today is we're just playing with it so i'm going to put this down and smash it against the paper and that putty just helps keep it from moving and then we're going to grab one of the wheels, and this is this is the ellipse. Okay, you can see the word ellipse right there. So there's an ellipse. The original fun blue tack, blue fun tack works great on other things. Oh yeah, I use it all the time when we're photographing. We use the heck out of blue tack. Let me tell you, this is the hexagon. This one, whoops, sorry, is the Pentagon. I'm trying to get it so the light can reflect just enough so you can see it. Pentagon. And this one is the square. And each one of these holes is numbered. I don't know if you can see that or not, but each one of those holes is numbered. Okay. All right, so let's go back over here just to kind of get the idea. And um, so we're going to take the ellipse and we're going to put this in here. And there's, a, bear in mind, I have just been playing with this for a couple of days, so I don't know all the ins and outs of this. Um, I did find that the pins that I like to work with were the G, either the G2, the Pilot G2 pins, or the other one I liked to use, but I just didn't have, mine aren't in very good shape. The other one is the Sarasa Gel Retractable. This is from the company Zebra. And they look almost identical to the G2 pens, but they're both gel inks, but they both dry really fast. So there you go. So I've got an assortment of both, the Sarasa and also the, the Pilot. Oh, thanks, Ellen. Um, okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to just get out some of these pins. And so I'll use some of the G2s and some of the Sarasa because I have both. So we'll use some of each, I think. <laughs> well, who knows what's going to happen here? Who knows what's going to happen here today? All right, so I'm going to pick a mark. It doesn't really matter to me. And there is, as I said, there is a learning curve with this. So I just pick a mark, put the little wheel in there. I'm going to get a uh, pen and just make sure my ink is flowing. And I'm going to pick a hole, and they say the, in the instructions that the holes closest, closest 
to the center are easier to do. Um, so I don't know if that's true or not. But anyway, let's pick one. So we're going to take this one right here, just random, okay? And I have these so that I can read the, the uh, engraving on them. All right, so here we go. So this is the way it works. You put the pin in there and then start moving it around. Now I'm doing this super slow, so who knows if I'll do this right or not. But you go around and around and around the circle. And I'm going very slow motion, folks. And I'm not using a lot of pressure with the pen. The pen is as upright as I can make it be. And I'm going to go around and around and around until I go return back to the place I started. So I don't know that you'll be able to see it, but I can see it. So this is the kind of thing that either makes you crazy or very happy. <laughs> okay, so we did that. So without moving it, because I went stopped where I began, let's just pick another one, another color. Let's go with red because I think that'll show up quite well. And I'm just going to pick another hole here. So we did this one. Let's do let's do this one over here and just see what happens. Now, you need to keep the pressure so that the gear or the disc is moving around the ring. And there are times when I just completely mess up and, you know, I get a goofy line. And I'm like, well, that one didn't work out. Because this is one of those that if you don't do it, um, if you don't, if you if you mess up in the middle of it, it's kind of hard to fix it. So let's pick another one. Now let's go for broke and let's go for one of the outside lines or outside holes. Just because. Let's see if we can do it. If we can't, it's a piece of paper. Who cares, right? And there are some of these that I can't do and talk at the same time. This is kind of one of them. And you'll find, at least I did, that some of the patterns I liked together and some of them I didn't like together. Okay, so that one, I'm going to switch cameras. We're going to go to the close-up camera as soon as I get things rearranged here and I can get to it. Okay, give me a second to rearrange my camera. Got too much stuff, too much stuff in my way here at the moment. Okay, so then I'm going to pick this up and when the putty is, um, when you first put it on there, sometimes the putty kind of wants to stick to the paper. So you kind of have to peel it off easily. I think as, see, you can see it right there. As the putty gets um, older, I think it probably will be better, actually. So what I do to pick this up off the paper, ta-da, that's right, Nancy, ta-da. I just use the the wad and just pick it up off the paper. That's what I do. Okay, so there is that. Now you wouldn't necessarily, maybe you don't want to use the putty, maybe you just want to hold it with your fingers. You know, you can do that. Okay, another way to use this, we're going to work with the same wheel. Okay, so I'm going to put it back down again. Reposition a little bit. Okay, so I'm using the same ellipse wheel, 
And I'm going to put this down on the, uh, put it on inside. I don't know. I don't know my spirograph terminology. Carla said, sorry, I just looked at the chat. Carla says she does this on book pages and then uses the pages and collage. Great idea, Carla. Pablo says she was never patient enough for this. <laughs> I understand. I understand. I was motivated. I was motivated. Okay, let's do, let's start with um, a different color pen. So this is a a turquoise ink and this is the Pilot G2. I do find that studying my hand on the ring kind of helps but you got to keep your fingers out of the way. So I'm going to pick a, um, a point and I've lined up the little mark right here. There's a little engraved mark and I've lined it up as close as I can to one of the the etched marks on the, the uh, ring. They don't mark, they don't line up exactly. The line of the disc is either one side or the other of this other one, but you just pick a side and just go for it. Okay, let's pick another one of these. Let's go for, mm, now the only thing you have to do here is you have to remember which one you select. <laughs> so this could be dangerous. All right, let's go for broke and we'll go for one of the outside holes. So the third hole, you guys are responsible for re helping me remember this. We're going to go with the, the bottom hole on the side where there's only three. I've got a shot at remembering that, maybe. Okay, maybe. All right, here we go. You need, there is a learning curve with this. I cannot stress that enough. I can't imagine that this does not just frustrate the stuffing out of children. <clears throat> a lot of children, not every child, of course, until they get into, you know, catch the flow of it. So when you get back to where you started, right there. Okay, so I've gotten back, gotten back to where I started. I'm going to lift up the little wheel and I'm going to move it over two teeth. One, two. And I'm going to go again. Same hole, same thing. So you've shifted the design by two teeth. And again, you stop when you get back to where you started. Okay, which is right there. All right, I'm going to lift it up and I'm going to move it two teeth again. One, two. All right. Let's See if hopefully I didn't mess it up, but if I did, it's a piece of paper. Same hole, doing it again. I like working with a sturdier paper, I found, because it um, didn't move around on me. rather than like typing paper or the paper that comes with it. Okay, and then we're going to go, we're going to do it one more time. So we're going to move one, two, and we're going to do it again. Let's see what happens. This is one of those things that can make you really tense or it can make you really relax. <laughs> just depends. It just depends. Okay, I'm not sure if I'm back. Okay. 
Okay. I think I made it back where I started. And that's what you end up with. Okay. So that's what I ended up with. And there's a little blob of ink there, but you know, that's because I stopped and looked at it. Okay, so we got that one. So let's pull this off. All right, isn't that cool? So that was what I did was I shifted the little inside thing. I stopped exactly where the design, the first round completed, and then I lifted up the little disc and I moved it two teeth and did it again. And I did that three times after the first time. Isn't that cool? Mm hmm. All right, so let's go to another one. Let's switch discs. So let's put a different disc in. So, so far we've worked just with the one called Ellipse. Okay, that's the one we've been doing. So let's switch to, remember this is the beginner one. <laughs> this is the beginner one. So let's go to the hex, hexagon, trying to catch the light. Hang on a second. There we go, hexagon. Well, you can see it right there. Yeah, duh. Okay, hexagon. All right, so let's go hexagon and let's line it up. And the only reason that I'm that I try to line it up is so that I have a shot at repeating something. All right, so what we use so far with the G2 pin. So let's use this one is a Sarasa. Okay, so this is the Sarasa. They're the same point the same size point. Yep, this is the beginner ring. <laughs> this is the beginner one. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the hexagon. So let's go, let's do one of the outer ones. I, d I don't know. I like the outer ones for some reason. So let's do an outer hole and let's go see what we get. Now, as you can see, you see what the line's doing? It's not that nice smooth line. Hopefully you can see that. It does these kind of strange and you think when you start this it's like this is gonna look like crap. And if you screw up it can look like crap. Just saying. But go until you stop back where you started. So you got to keep going until you get back to where you began. Try to relax your little pinky finger barb. This is supposed to be fun. <laughs> yes. All right, so we're back where we started. Okay. So let's move three teeth this time. Well, no, let's do two. Two is a good number. One two and let's do it again this time let's use a different color let's use pink okay this is a pilot g2 all right same hole i shifted it two teeth all right let's see what it does this is all jennifer's fault from the Mandela Madness class. So don't blame me. You need to blame Jennifer. And if everybody wants to blame her, I'll tell her tomorrow because I'm sure she'll be in the live show and share. Okay, so you keep going until you get back where you started. And when you change colors, it kind of is uh, helpful. Okay, back where I started. Okay, let's shift it two teeth once again. So I'm just lifting up and moving over. One, two, hopefully I got that, all right. And then I'm gonna do it again, same hole. And again, go until you're back where you started. And when you change colors of pins, that makes it easy to determine that, or easier anyway. Okay. 
So I'm going to do a few of these and then we're going to do something with them. See what we can come up with. I think that's it. Yeah. Okay. So that was that one. Marion, this is the bonus class. <laughs> this is bonus class right here. Hi, Marion. Okay, so very cool, don't you think? Don't you think those are neat? Now, you do get a little bit of schmutz here in the center, you know, where the discs get some stuff on the back side of them. See that? So there's a little bit of schmutz happening there, but you're going you're gonna to have to just work around that. Just have to work around it. All right, let's go to a different disc again. So we're still working with the beginner set. Let's go to the Pentagon one. And let's line it up. Hi, Diana. Nice to have you here. Just going to have a little, uh, a little, a little uh, tea break. I know, Janet. I was trying to say no to the schmutz, but it—I um, don't know how to—I don't know how to avoid it. You know, I don't know how to avoid it. Okay. So this is a Sarasa. This is one of the Sarasa pins. Um, I'll do one. We'll do one here in a minute with one of the pins that comes with it, and I'll show you the difference. And watch, it'll probably work like fine. <laughs> okay. Let's go for the center hole on this one, and we'll just see what happens. This one is the Pentagon. I have to say that the ones that have the straighter sides on the discs are more challenging for me to catch the rhythm on them because they just sort of jump around a little bit. You know, they have that like jaggedy. They're not super smooth lines. Okay, so we've got that. This time, just for grins and giggles, I'm gonna, I moved from the center, I'm gonna go to the next one out. Let's do it again. So this is the next hole away from the center. Again, if you're switching pen colors, this is gonna be easier to know where you are when you get back to the beginning. Okay, so just for the sake of making it a little easier to see, let's change colors. And then that was the second hole. Let's go to the third one and see what happens. So this time I'm not shifting the teeth at all. I'm just switching the holes in the disc. So I use the one closest to the middle. Then the next one closest to the middle, and then the next one. You don't want to push for all your worth when you're um, the pin. It, the tendency I found was to push really hard with the pin uh, in order to try and make everything work the way I wanted it to work, and that's not necessarily the best the best plan. I found. Okay, so now let's just see what happens if we go to the outer middle hole because these are all kind of lined up. All right, let's take the one close, almost second to the to the end. Let's see what happens. So switch colors of ink, so I because I'm getting a lot of lines here. But these are not so smooth working with the straight straighter sides um, of the um, shapes. You know, the shapes are not the round ones. 
yeah, spit it out. The round disc I find easier to do. Okay, I'm back to where I started. Now I'm going to switch to red. I'm going to go to the very outer side, the outer one. I have not changed the positioning. I almost let it jump out of the track. Don't do that. Um, the rounder shapes I find are a little easier to do, but, and as you can clearly tell, I cannot look at the chat when I'm doing this. I got to watch what I'm doing. All right, so what I used on this is I did all I did all these five holes right here okay that's what I used so the ones that were kind of in a line and that's what ended up got a little putty to get I got a little putty damage here a little putty a little putty pickup so that ended up to be this okay all right now let's do a really cool one um, I do have a cheat sheet and I recommend <laughs> that you have a cheat sheet too well, let's see yeah here's my cheat sheets are in here okay here are my cheat sheets and what I did was I made a design I wrote down what the the disc was and what hole because each hole has a number on it and then what I did so I have a cheat sheet for a bunch of the different um, the different ones so let's see if we can do this one so this is again using the same green beginner <clears throat> beginner ring alright and the ellipse and we did the 11, the hole that was marked 11. And by the time I set this down, I have to remember where 11 is. Okay, I'm going to start with it right here. Um, let's see, how should we do this? There's no guarantee that this is going to come out the same way. None whatsoever, but we're going to give it a shot. Okay, so we're going to start with number 11, which is this one, I think. All right, let's go for it and see what happens. Hope you hope you can see. Do you see how smoothly this works with the round, the more round disc? That doesn't mean I'm not going to mess it up, but it just it's more smooth. Smoother, I think, is the correct term, Barb. And. Get back to the place you started. All right, then I'm going to move it over two teeth. I'm going to use exactly the same hole again. Let's let's switch back and forth between red and black, shall we? That way you can track what the lines I'm doing. Clearly it's hard to carry on a conversation and do this at the same time. All right, back where I started. Then I'm going to move over two teeth, put it back down, let's go back to red, same hole, see what happens. And 
and you got to keep your fingers out of the way of the side so that it doesn't interfere with the how it's tracking okay I'm gonna go back to black I'm gonna move the wheel two teeth I'm gonna go back to black use the same hole Okay, and I think that's about as many times as it took me to do that other one. And so I'm going to pull this off. Now, if it's in one color, it's a little more dramatic than it is if it's two colors. But I wanted you to kind of get the idea of what I was, what I was doing. I got the hang of this bad boy. <laughs> okay. So there is that one that we just did. Isn't that interesting? It's pretty cool. All right, so we've done, we have explored the beginner wheel. Okay, now you can use the other shapes as well. So for example, there is one that's called a shield in the red set. We're jumping up to medium. Do you trust me? Here, let's do this one first, though, with, um, with the Spirograph pen. So we'll see how it works today. Um, here's the Spirograph pen. I mean, it's labeled Spirograph. It comes with the set. And let's, um, let's use the, the circular or the ellipse because it's easy. And let's just pick a spot. I'm not going to care which one. We're just going to pick a spot and let's see how we do. Now, first of all, it's a fatter tip than the ones I was using. But let's see what it does. See if it works. What I found when I was playing with these to start with is that sometimes the lines were not um, the same thickness. Sometimes they, it's kind of like the ink kind of splattered, which could have been operator error, I suppose, but I would hate to admit that, you know, where I wasn't going very smoothly. Actually, that wasn't too bad. Let's pick another, we'll use another color and go a different hole. So let's pick one of the outside holes here. We'll pick this one. So the pin point is considerably thicker than the pins I was using, so you're going to get a completely different look. Okay, let's move over three little teeth and see what happens. One, two, three. Which one was I using? This one? <laughs> That's what happens when you don't pay attention. Well, it wasn't as bad as it was the first time I used these, I have to say. So, but you get, so with the, the point being with a thicker, you know, a more medium or broad tip, you're going to get a different look. This is with the fine point. This is with the thicker point, the pins that come with it. They didn't splatter very much here, um, but they did, they did splatter quite a bit on the, the uh, paper that came with the Spirograph. Okay, so let's go to 
this and let's use one of the more advanced, the medium shapes. Okay. Hello, Sandy. Yeah, it might work. The Sharpie pen might work really well. I haven't tried that, but it could. It could. Okay, so let's put the shield on here so I know where I'm starting. So this is using the medium. We're jumping up. We're trying to, we're stretching our wings here. We're jumping up to, we're moving away from beginner. We've moved from beginner to medium. But this outer ring is the beginner ring. All right, so let's take, um, mm, I don't know. Let's use this hole right here and see what it does. Now, I'm not getting down here like I'm writing with a, writing a letter. I'm holding back on the pen when I do this and holding the pen pretty perpendicular. To the paper. This has a much more um, jaggedy feel to it. Which I have to admit, when I started playing with these and I was doing some of these different shapes, I'm like, oh, that feels so strange. Okay, so let's, um, let's stay in the same position and just pick a different hole. So how about if we try the Spirograph pin? and one of the, the center kind of holes here, one that's closer into the middle, and see what happens. These don't have the smooth feel of using the... that ellipse is much smoother. when it's rotating around the ring. Okay. So we're going to call that good. Just to prove to you that you can use the the um, combine the sets, combine the rings and the different patterns. All right, let's go for broke. And let's go let's go up to the advanced one. This is where it could all go wrong. <laughs> could all go wrong here. So we're going to the advanced ring. I'm starting to sweat, people. I'm starting to sweat. So I'm going to put the putty on this just cuz, you know, I'm going to try and give myself every advantage here. Barb, is it difficult to keep the inner plastic circle in position? It's it's a little challenge when you first start, especially. It's a little challenging because it does kind of want to jump out of there. That's why having that putty stuff on the back seems to really be a good thing. All right, let's let's go for broke here and let's try. We're going to match a purple with a purple. This could go horribly wrong at any moment. <laughs> I'm just telling you. And if it does, it just does. All right. Let's go to, um, this is a blue in the Sarasa ink. Okay. All right. Let's um, match it up here somewhere. Let's, let's start here. All right. Let's everybody cross your fingers. We're going to go for uh, one of the center holes because it's supposed to be easier. Okay, here we go. Yeah, right about now, I think. I don't know about this one. This is looking pretty ugly. Uh, 
don't know. Everybody hold your breath. Okay, I got back to where I started. Well, it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. All right, let's switch to a different color. And um, do you think we can do, let's try to pick another hole. Well, no, let's do this. Let's take this out and let's try it with this, this ring and let's try it with the ellipse and see what happens. Let's see what happens. What could go wrong? Okay, so I'm going to pick this hole. This one kind of messes with your head because it is, because of the square, it doesn't do the same shape all the way around. Okay, so that's that. I'm totally unimpressed with this shape. I'm totally unimpressed with the expert, <laughs> I have to say. I'm not impressed with the expert. Let's use a red one since we're trying stuff out, let's use a red one on the same thing and just see what happens. Okay, let's try it. Hey, Shannon. Okay, let's pick a hole out here. We'll make it hard for ourselves. We'll take one on the outside. This one is called, the disc that I'm using is called the teardrop. Apparently it only goes around this thing one time. So I'm just retracing the line I did because it's going over the same line. All right, then let's pick another one. Um, we'll pick a different line, a different hole. I'm not impressed with the square thing, personally. Okay, we're going to call it good. So you have seen me do the expert. You have watched me do the expert um, whatever ring. We haven't done the red one. You want me to do the red one? The red one is the triangle. Shall we try it? Shall we try it? Say we did. And then we'll actually do something with these. Um, you can't post a link because you can't do it in uh, YouTube doesn't let you do that um, so it's not a matter of unless you're one of the admin people moderators you can't post links because they don't allow it sorry about that okay so we now have our triangle with the putty in place. All right, so we're going to pick a spot, any spot. We're going to put it down. We're going to plant it. Shall we try the teardrop? Okay, let's try the teardrop. So, oh, this was an egg. Sorry, I told you that was a teardrop. That was an egg. This was the egg that we just did, not the teardrop. This is the teardrop. They're very similar, but... I can guarantee you that they're going to come out with totally different things. So let's try it. Okay, let's go to, let's try this pin. This one is a uh, Sarasa. So we're going to line it up here. And yeah, okay, this again, let's, this is the medium level. Okay, let's see what happens. Here we go. I haven't done this triangle before, so this could go crazy wonky at any moment. I don't dare say anything too uh, positive at this point because it could go crazy at any moment. Keep going. Oop. Yeah, 
that I'm not sure was okay that's back to where we started okay um, let's do we'll pick another color I'm just gonna randomly pick another hole I'll pick this one see what happens I'm thinking we'll make an art journal page with the ones I have done. What do you think? You think that's a good idea? Very strange feeling, I have to say. Very strange feeling. one is hard to see if I'm back where I started yes I think so maybe now I think I'm off but anyway I think I got off on that one I'm pretty sure I did because <laughs> that one looks pretty wonky either that or I didn't finish it which is possible yeah not my favorite I like the round ones really well I don't like the the medium and the square ones very well yeah that's just me Okay, let's go back over here. So you can see what we did. Okay, from high, oops, sorry, from high above. So there's what we got. All right, so what I did after I filled a whole page full of these, I filled a couple of pages of them. And what I did after that was I sprayed them with all different kinds of inks, tumble dye inks, and let them sit and dry. So the sheet just sat and dry, dried. Um, before I actually do that, maybe we should, I should show you how this one works. This one is different. Um, let's do that. So this is a different, this is actually the one that um, Jennifer actually showed us so again it comes with paper it comes with um, a little instruction booklet like so and it comes with the tool the difference is this tool is all in one okay so it's all one tool it does come with some pens as well okay but this is all in one okay so here's more of my Here's more of my little cheat sheet that I made up for myself. This, these patterns I have on here actually were using the, the other tool. But we'll, we'll play with this one a little bit. This is a completely different way of using. It works completely differently. All right, so you put the tool down like so. I did find when I was playing with this, I found it <coughs> actually... <clears throat> helpful to put some of this putty on the back side of this it does have some little rubber feet but I found it helpful to put some of the putty down and we're gonna live dangerously and see what see if we can make it work um, let's see let's go for this one right here but see this little bit in the middle this wiggles around like so and so it works very differently and um, yeah, Linda, you can stop sweating until we start this one. <laughs> so what the action of this is, and, and it's going to take me a little bit to get it because I'm used to doing these. You have to hold the tool, and then you draw around inside that shape over and over and over and over. And it rotates the tool, and it kind of messes with your head because it's kind of like rubbing your head and patting your stomach. So I found it easiest to get the little um, disc inside, get it over to the edge. That, that's what I found worked the easiest. And put, plant the pin and decide which way you're going to go. Are you going to go clockwise or counterclockwise? And it's just a comfort thing, comfort level thing. 
actually I'm going to start over here and then just go for it and you have to keep the pressure of the pin at, at least what I found is you have to keep the pressure against the pin of the pin against the sides of the shape and I really can't talk when I do this one so I'll be back to you in a minute <laughs> and don't make me look at the chat don't make me look at the chat and whatever you do, you want to keep going until you get back to where you started. Okay. Oops, I didn't quite get there. Okay, so now I'm back where I started. I am holding my breath, I'm telling you. Okay, now I'm going to take a different um, pen. I have not shifted the tool at all. And I'm going to pick a different um, hole, a different section, and I'm going to do the same thing, okay? So, unlike the other one, which has different holes in the discs, that you can move the pin to different holes in the disc. This one you choose a different shape and you rotate the pin around and around and around. <clears throat> Inside that shape, which is, it draws the shape and moves the disc at the same time. This one I found had a bit more of a learning curve for me now I'm not a math whiz or um, geometry or any any type of thing like that so this sort of stuff I find to be challenging <laughs> I have to tell you all right let's pick one more we'll change colors of ink again just so that you can can have something as a point of reference so I'm going to pick this one out here at the outer edge I'm going to do the same thing okay So I'm on the same um, shape or the same section of this tool. I've never shifted it on purpose. I've just selected different parts of this section to create the design. Okay, then I'm going to lift it up, and then I'm going to show it to you. Okay, so there's that one. It does. The brain works completely different with this than it does using the wheels. Your hand works different. Your brain definitely works different. Okay, so there's that one. <clears throat> It's just, it's just really quite a different experience. My <clears throat> favorite part of this whole thing is this little guy in the middle. I love this little guy. So I'm going to put this one right here. Okay, right there. I'm going to pick my uh, pen. And again, it this little guy moves around. So pick a spot. And whatever direction you go with the pen, if you go to the right or you go to the left, you just pick it and you go that direction until you get done. And I, I kind of find myself going both directions. The funny thing is you draw going one way, but the wheel spins the other way, which probably doesn't make any sense. Okay, so I've done one. I'll lift that up just so you can see. So I've done one show this to you up close okay so that's one 
Okay, let's do another one. I'm going to stay over here with this camera so you can see a little bit better. Um, so we're going to put in another, use the middle part again. Sorry, right here. Um, let's use a black pen. I think this is black. And so I'm going to pick the section. So this way you can, hopefully you can really see what I'm doing. So I'm going to pick the section and then I'm going to do the pen I think you're going to see what I mean when you go in here. See, I'm moving the pin in a counterclockwise direction, but that little disc in the center is spinning clockwise. So it really, for me, it just really messes with my head. Okay, so I've got that one. I'm not going to move it. I'm just going to switch um, to a different hole and I'm going to switch to um, a different pin color. So let's see what it does. Okay. So you see how this little guy did? I did two rounds. Hey cat! So I did two rounds, but you see it's very it's really quite different than um, than using the rings with the with the disc attached the little disc that you drop in. So I'm going to put another one right here. Okay, so I'm going to drop this down. The little guy in the middle is easier to use, I think. Um, I'll show you one of the really weird patterns here, and this one is a challenge. This one long this long shape here, this is a challenge. So let's see if we can make it work. It's only paper. So remember that you're drawing around the shape. And by you drawing, it forms the pattern and it moves the wheel, the little shape thing. I'm not sure, but what I might have messed this up. We'll find out. Paper. Okay, I think I've gone around this twice. So it may or may not be okay, but anyway, that's not too bad. But that long shape makes that, which is interesting. I prefer these or this over this, but this is okay. All right, and let's do one more. So we'll do one more, then we're going to put some ink on this, just so you get the idea of how I use the inks. Um, so let's do, uh, let's just do this one. Well, we'll do this one. Okay, here we go. And some of the shapes are very, um, not what you expect at all. When you start drawing it, you go, I didn't think that was going to happen. Okay, so then let's take another one and we'll pick another shape here. Maybe this one. Let's see. How about, how about this one? But I can see if where if you use this all the time, you're going to get you're going to find your favorite shapes that you like, your favorite patterns, you know? Okay. So there's those to create that one. So limitless, honestly, limitless numbers of designs that you can come up with. And so that is this one. This is called the Spirograph Cyclex, C-Y-C-L-E-X. All right, so let's get rid of that. So I'm gonna, I'm done playing. With, I'm done playing with the toys. So we're gonna put the toys away. 
get the toys out of our way, get the pins out of our way. So I have to take it back. When it came to the Spirograph pins, actually they worked fine on the watercolor paper. So, all right, gonna move all this jazz out of my way. Ooh, it is warm in here today. Okay, now I'm gonna get my nasty spray cloth. Yes, they were just normal writing pens, except for when I showed the ones that were spirograph. Those were the ones that actually came with the spirograph tool. But they were just normal writing pens. They were gel ink. So these were the pens I used, the Pilot G2s. Or the other one was the Sarasa Gel Retractable. So I was using both of these. Okay, Linda needs a drink. Me too. <laughs> Me too. Ah, okay. So here's what we have. And this is my old nasty spray thing that I'm going to try not to spray. I'm going to try really hard not to spray me and the, the whole thing here. Now, these inks I have found to be permanent. Now, I'm not going to guarantee that everybody's going to have the same thing, but um, that's my experience that these have been permanent. So you're going to see what I'm talking about. So this is watercolor paper. I'm going to spray it down with water to start with. If race is still here, oh, now that one clearly is not. What did I use on that? Ah, I you you know what? The Pilot G2s, I thought they were permanent. Let's see. No. These are Okay, well we don't have to get out the spray inks cuz we're just going to let this happen. Interesting. Okay, so the lesson here is, and I'm liberally spraying this with water, the lesson here is test your inks because the Sarasa pins that I used, as you can see, some of the colors are absolutely not going to stay put. Interesting. These were the ones I did last night, so I'm going to shift this. These are the ones I did last night. And I did exactly the same thing, except I used only the Sarasa pins, none of the G2, other than a black one. Interesting that some of the inks are not permanent. Some of them are. You can see some of the lines here, the colors here, are staying put. But like this pink, no. And that blue, definitely not. Look at that. Uh-huh. This is why you have to test things. This is the Spirograph ink. Now see, I will still use most of these. This one is unusable. This one is blurred out so much, and so has, so has this one. Those two have blurred out so much they're unusable, and some of these little guys in the center. But look, this one, perfectly usable. So anyway, okay, let's go back, and I'll just tell you how I did it. So I started out by spraying it with water. So you're going to pretend with me that all the lines stayed and didn't move. <laughs> so you got to pretend with me. Then these are my standard that I like to use, the SEI tumble dyes and I, that are diluted. And I just liberally sprayed. Friction pens are not permanent because they're, it's a thermal reactive ink. So they're never going to be permanent. They're, they will go away with heat or um, they come back with freezing cold. Um, if, if exposed to extreme temperatures, the ink reacts. So no, they're not. Actually, this is really quite pretty. <laughs> Didn't get what I thought I was going to get, but hey. And then the tumble dies also come in glitter. So this is the silver, and then there's a gold. And again, I've diluted them. I've just put them in some in the spray bottles with some water. I don't measure it exactly. Okay, this one sprayer's gone haywire. 
Don't you just love it when you're live on the air and stuff messes up on you, huh? So the silver sprayer went wonky. Let's try the gold one. Yeah, the gold one's fine. Okay, so that is exactly what I did. And then I let it sit and dry. All right, so that's what I would do here. So you can see that uh, some of the inks definitely are not stable. And, um, yeah, that's what you learn. That is what you learn when you try stuff out live in front of the world. <laughs> so I'm going to set this off to the side and let it just do its thing, whatever it's going to do. You know, it's going to, the inks are going to do their thing. Actually, this could end up being one of my favorite things ever. You never know. So, I took all the ones that I had no trouble with, which was everything I did last night, and I cut them out. So after it dried, and I, the reason I did all that spraying after I did the inking is because I didn't want to fight with the glitter, which the silver and gold have a fine glitter in them. I didn't want to fight with that stuff, with the pins trying to jump over it, so yeah. These clearly worked fine. And this, the funny thing is, this is the same ink, the same turquoise ink that ran on that other piece of paper. I have no idea. Don't ask me questions about that because I don't know. It didn't run last night. It did today. No clue. Anyway, let's grab a, let's grab an art journal. Yeah, I don't know which ones were stable. I really don't know. It's appeared that, um, because I was using both, Sandy, so I don't know which ones were and which weren't. Yeah. Who knows? All right, let's pick a spot here. Let's see if we can come up with a page that has a background. Already done. Has a little, has a little something on here. I wonder if this will peel off. Maybe. Let me see if I can get this off. I think this is a sticker, so I'm going to see if I can get this off. So we can start with just plain pages. This was a sticker that was left from something that I stuck in here. Okay, done. Get rid of those. If you have um, stickers that are not water soluble, the glue is not water soluble, this product will take it off. This is undo. So that's why that came off because that was not a water react or water soluble glue. And it evaporates out of the out of your paper. Okay, so let's um, start putting some of these on here just because we can. I don't know. I didn't heat set it last night. That was what's funny. So, and I used exactly the same paper. Yeah, who knows? It's paper. It's paper. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're just going to put some of these around the page. And this is just leftover scraped paint that we've got going on here. So we're going to just left things just kind of go around the page. Okay, and then we're going to, let's do these and then we'll go back and we'll do the other ones in a little bit. One of the things I want to do is I want to put some ink around the edges of some of these for fun, just for fun. <laughs> Signa's going to have to get out her spirograph and try it. 
So what I've got here is some archival ink. This is cobalt blue. I tend to reach for the cobalt blue more than I do the black these days. I don't know why, just because I do. So I just sat down with a pair of scissors and I cut these out. Of course, you could ink different colors around them. But I'm just doing this just to kind of make things show up a little bit more. And there's going to be some of these that are going to hang off the page so I can like this one, I can cut the um, bits off the edges and use on other things if I decide to. But I'm doing this so that they'll kind of show up a little bit more against that background. Yeah, it's a real curiosity about the ink since I used the same colors. Oh, I see a couple things I missed. Since I used the same colors, or the same inks last night that I used today, that's funny. That's why you cannot get, at least in my opinion, you can't get married to the outcome of anything because you don't know exactly how it's going to turn out. If it doesn't turn out the way you expected it to, you go, oh, well, look at that. I tell you, very often I say at any moment it could go horribly wrong. <laughs> you saw it here first. Okay. I think I got all of them that time. All right. So thank you everybody for being here today. I really am glad you're here. In case you just got here and you don't have a clue who I am, my name is Barb Owen. We have a membership website called howtogetcreative.com. And if you like what I do, you might want to check out howtogetcreative.com because there's all kinds of creative arts video classes there. All right, so you see what I've done? I've got just that little bit of ink just made them pop out. So maybe we'll just work on this side of this page since what time is it? It's almost three o'clock. So um, we're just going to work on this side and I'll play with the other side maybe later and show you the overall effect of two pages since this is logical that this would go together since it's the same colors. But let's move forward. So we're going to put I'm just using tacky glue on the back because this is watercolor paper so it is pretty tough stuff. 140 pound watercolor paper. So we're going to put this one, we're going to plant this one right here. Tacky glue in my experience um, does indeed tack up pretty quickly so although I may have to go back and touch those a little bit you know a couple of times you know just to encourage them to stay down it does tack up pretty quickly which is one of the reasons I really like it and it will hold heavy stuff which is great like this watercolor paper now it's best if you um, do things like this and then put something heavy on your book, on your art journal. You know, cover it with parchment paper, which is a staple in my creative space in the sewing area and out here in the paint and paper and stuff area. I have parchment paper and I also have it in the kitchen. And I use that parchment paper all the time because it is a really good non-stick type thing and it will protect your pages. So ideally before you go on with this project you would let this completely dry under weight and then that way if you had any glue that was hanging out you would have it um, dried as well.
and then you're safe to go forward and embellish which is what I'm planning to do is to embellish over this the rest of this page with more of uh, my pens and so forth and I doubt if you can tell in under the camera that these are sparkly but this one is especially sparkly from the the um, gold tumble dye that I sprayed on it hi Barry Crenshaw thank you thanks for being here okay all right so you kind of got the idea and if any of these edges pop up later like this one acts like it's not wanting to stay down um, you can always come back later and stick a little bit more glue under there so I often work with a pin like a long straight pin and if edges are popping up I'll use a little straight pin and I'll stick the glue under the edge to get it to um, fully adhere to whatever it is I'm working on okay so let's come down here I don't know exactly what what all kinds of stuff I've got one of the things I do is I am famous for sticking stuff in my journal that I want to add to it <laughs> and then it just gets transferred from one page to another to another Eileen's used to have um, that was a available easily she used to have a um, heavier glue that was called what was that called heavy it wasn't heavy duty I forgot the name of it but the only place I have seen that my local suppliers don't have it um, you have to order it and let me tell you that was the best glue it absolutely I mean it put tacky glue move tacky glue into a whole new realm and you can still get it but it comes it used to come in a squeeze bottle like the gold bottle glue now it comes I think in a little uh, tub anyway I don't have any of it okay so we're gonna put this one like right here this is another one this one's quite sparkly in real life too don't they look pretty against the that background all right so we're gonna call that good I'll probably have to come back and add some more glue to these in after a while but I do like the way that the Aleens will roll off your fingers and you don't have trouble yeah it's a tacky glue but it's a it's a heavy heavier heavier tacky glue that I'm talking about but I can't remember the exact name of it anyway I don't have any of that so why talk about it <laughs> why talk about it okay in your imagination some of these can look like little gears can't they now it's not even the fast grab it's a it is a um, it's a thicker version of the tacky glue joggles I know that joggles sells it because she uses it quite a bit alright so until this grabs I'm gonna to have to keep poking these down a little bit alright let's see if we can cut off the out, outer edges so well I hope you guys have had fun today learning about a kids toy called the spirograph the one I didn't show you was the spirograph junior and yeah I'm not cracked about that one but it's probably because I'm not young enough to be able to use it <laughs> I'm probably not young enough to be able to use it and one more this is better done when you're um, 
glue has been fully dried. Otherwise, you end up having to clean up your scissors. All right, let's move this out of the way. Okay, so now we've got clean pages to work with, which personally, I like. I like clean edges. Some people don't. Some people don't care. All right, so now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of these middles and put them in places where they need a little something something. And then I'm my plan is to go back and embellish these even further with ink pens, gel pens, and um, felt tip pens. So I'm going to add some middles to some of these with the little guys to just kind of punch them up a little bit. Ones that I think really need something. I'll put this one here. Maybe I like it there. Just, just playing. And then if you have little scrapbooking jewels or crystals or, you know, flat embellishments of some kind, you can actually embellish these even more by putting them in the center. Or you can use, you know, any number of products that have a dimensional quality that you can put in the centers of them, as long as they don't stick to your pages. Brought back some fun moments. Good. I'm glad. All right, let's put one more in here. Let's stick one more in here someplace. I'm just looking at where I want to put it. I like it there. Okay. Just make a decision. And then in the other ones that have open spaces, these other open spaces, I'll probably go back and add some embellishment designs and so forth inside those. And of course, these would have popped up more if I inked around the edges of the little circles, but I will do some other things around those to pop them up. All right, so you can see kind of what you can do with them. You can just play with them, then you can get your um, get your pens out and just start embellishing and having a good time. So hopefully that gives you an idea of something you can do. You can make cards with them. You can do all kinds of things. All right, so there we go. And then you could take these little bits and pieces of, of spirograph bits and you can use those on the other page or you can have them peeking out from a page like that you know you can do all kinds of things with them all right who knows what I'll do come back next week and I'll show it to you when we get them all done which by the way last week we did these cards so I'm gonna stop here with this for the moment you know so you got the idea of kind of where I'm headed I'll show it to you next week when it's finished Last week we did cards, and so I just thought I would show these to you when they were completely done. So as they were completely finished, I'll show them to you over here. Just make a decision right. Just pick one and go for it. The world's not going to end because you don't make the right decision, right? Okay, so here's this one. And I want to show you something. I'm not great at getting these all, you know, everything evenly spaced. I, I never have been good at that. So there's more space over here um, than there was over here. So I just choose that spot to write my name. So it's okay. If you don't get the exact way you intended for it to be, just pick a spot, put your name there. So I just wanted to show you how they came out with the different colors of mats. These were this was from last week's stream. So you're welcome to go back and watch this. These are all woven paste papers. That one. This one. So I got quite a few out of this 
those are all I intend for them to be vertical this one I intended to be horizontal because I where I put my name this one apparently I don't care because I didn't put my name on it at all <laughs> I thought I got my name on all of them but I see a couple that I didn't get it done always sign and date your work and there's that one so quite a few cards out of what we did last week yep all right okay folks let's go back to the um, if Shannon's still here Shannon I've got my own nostril cam today because my because my uh, regular camera said there wasn't enough room on the bus <laughs> so yeah so I got my own nostril cam going today and I keep looking at the wrong camera to talk to anyway we'll find out we'll find out we'll sort out the bus situation here in a minute hey Ruth good to see you uh, okay all right so I'm not gonna get the sponsors out today because I can't talk to you and ha talk to them and get wrangle cat wrangling and all that it's not gonna happen today so <laughs> I'm just telling you we're just gonna forego the sponsors they are safely locked behind door number one so they're they're fine they're in the window drunk in the sunshine all right um, I think that's it and so thanks for showing up let's take a look at this let me sop up the real inky stuff the real drippy parts of this so you can see that some of the colors absolutely did not run and some of them did so let me you see that interesting huh so some of the ink colors did not were not movable and some of them were actually it made a really cool sheet of paper I may try that again you never know all right um, I will see you next week same time same place I'm Barb Owen thanks for being here at uh, drama free Friday I will see you guys next week. Have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next week. And those of you in Mandela Madness, I'll see you tomorrow for the show and share. Good to see you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you next week. Remember to get creative today because you know it's easy. See you next time.